To start, let's look at the spotting technique for the Jaeger Salto Stretched, completely taken apart. The purpose of this full stretched out body spotting is to expose gymnasts to the Jaeger early in their career, when they are light enough to be held this way. This enables gymnasts to learn faster and more efficiently later on, when they're ready to start doing the maneuver. We are therefore going to stress two main actions. First holding the body stretched out, in opening position in the first half rotation, and second, once the gymnast is on her back, the arm movement with a transition to a slight forward curl in order to finish the movement and catch the bar. Whether it is for a piked, straddled or layout Jaeger, the first phase, until the gymnast lands on her back, is the same. Then, the gymnast either brings the arms in for a layout, or closes the legs together piked or straddled. In all cases, you must make her feel that the upper body is approaching the legs. For this stage, you need to be high enough in order to make the movement occur above the bar and in this way adhere to the actual trajectory of the flight element. And you need to stand on the most stable surface possible that is also long enough to allow you to move. It's better to use blocks rather than the spotting platform, which is often too short for this style of spotting. Arrange them so that your pelvis is at least as high as the bar, and so that the blocks are adjusted to your height. When standing at this height and with wooden bases placed on mats, you might not be very stable. If this is the case, ask someone to hold them. That will make you feel more secure. After the first giant forward, after the shoot, you will grasp the gymnast by her hips. Put your right hand on her left hip and your left hand on her right hip. The interesting thing about this grip is that your right arm goes around the gymnast so you are already in position to catch her on her back. All you need to do is put your left arm under the torso in order to stop the rotation. When she lands, your right arm is under the knees and your left arm is under the back, with your hand placed on the stomach. From there, the gymnast will move her arms, and all you need to do is take away your right arm in order to tip the body forward by supporting her in the other arm. At the end of the movement, place your right hand under the gymnast's stomach, and then grab the sides of her torso so she can catch the bar. When it comes to the trajectory, you need follow an imaginary line that runs perpendicular to the ground. As for the timing, make the gymnast ascend and turn at a speed that is close to the one for a giant forward. The next stage is to do the movement with less stopping time. As soon as the gymnast lands in your arms, she transitions to the next action. The actions are the same for you. And stopping on the back gradually disappears. For this, all you need to do is limit the action of your right hand during the transition onto the back. At first you leave it there for safety, and if everything goes well, you remove it and go directly to the next stage. Now for full spotting at normal speed. This spotting is also the same regardless of the body position during the Jaeger. For this spotting, you can stand on the spotting platform. There is no longer any stopping, so you don't need as much space. However, you are still high enough to adhere to the correct trajectory of the movement. You are going to spot a right after the leg lift, but this time by catching the gymnast on the stomach and back. The left hand is the one that helps with the lift, so it is placed under the stomach. You will stay in this position during the first half rotation, and then you'll need to invert your hands in order to keep them from crossing. So put your right hand on the stomach or ribs, and the left hand behind the back. Your muscular effort will be much less intense in this spotting. However, you'll need to be faster. Here you see the sandwich grip at the beginning of the salto. You need to simultaneously help with the rotation and follow the salto's vertical trajectory. 
Then place your left hand behind the gymnast's back and your right hand on her stomach. Now for spotting the Jaeger in a hard landing in a competition situation. We will start with the spotting at the beginning of the release element, which you can use for the first attempts at hard landing so that the gymnast quickly gets used to feeling how she did in the pit. This spotting should not be used for a long time and its main disadvantage is that you need to be tall enough to guide the movement for long enough. You must be able to touch the bar with your hands from a standing position on the mat. Otherwise the resulting timing won't correspond to reality. This spotting isn't essential now. You can easily do without it. For this spotting, stand to the gymnast right or left. Whichever you prefer. And far enough away from the bar so that you are parallel to the gymnast's center of gravity at the instant of release. As for your distance from the gymnast, I advise you not to stand too close. The closer you are, the greater the impression of speed will be. Let the gymnast do the first forward giant. And at the instant of the shoot for the Jaeger, place one hand on her shoulder. The objective is to absorb the speed of the rotation and the trajectory of the movement. For the gymnast, this can re-emphasize the need to keep the axis between the arms and the torso. The other hand is placed at stomach level and pushes vertically. The idea is to give a point of reference on the angle of release. Then get ready to spot the gymnast when she lands. Because these are the first attempts at a hard landing. Even if it appears that the gymnast is going to catch the bar, it's better to hold her in order to be prepared for any possibility. For this, come as close as possible in order to catch the stomach. In this case with the left hand and put the right hand in a sandwich grip and slow the forward momentum in order to prevent falls under the bar. Quickly cushion less and less and allow the normal timing to occur. Let's look at this from the spotting position, at normal speed and then in slow motion. Now, what do you do when the gymnast doesn't catch the bar? It is clear that our main role when working on hard landings is first and foremost to act effectively in order to guarantee our gymnast's safety. The first thing is to anticipate. That is to realize quickly that the gymnast is going to be too far away to catch the bar. When you use the little push at the beginning of the action, you generally know as soon as the hands open whether or not everything is okay. In this case, focus on the torso and the center of gravity, so you can move simultaneously and be in a strong position for the landing. 
Then, quickly grasp the gymnast's stomach and cushion the landing as much as possible. The most important thing is not to stop the gymnast in the air, but to ensure that she remains perfectly parallel to the ground. The major risk on bars is an over-rotated landing. So you need to slow down the torso as fast as possible in such a way that it is level with the legs. In the last part of the cushioning, try to keep your knees bent sideways, with the legs spread far enough apart. If you keep them pressed together, you might touch the gymnast's side and hurt her. The gymnast's role is also important in order to guarantee maximum safety. So you need to train her to keep her arms next to her ears. And above all, not to reach down in an effort to break the landing. And to try to stay stretched out. Many gymnasts close their hips and bend their knees, which puts a shock on the kneecap and is very painful. For this work in the pit and with big mats, having the gymnast practice doing a piked somersault and landing on her stomach, at first you can stay next to the gymnast, then gradually work up to having her do it alone. The other major risk in this release is when gymnasts are too close to the bar and their heels hit it. This is why I prefer to catch the gymnast in the sandwich grip rather than with one hand on the stomach and the other under the legs. If nevertheless our gymnast lets go too late or while exerting a lot of force on the bar, she would then hit the bar with her legs and this would cause her to tip backward. Fortunately, gymnasts almost always have the reflex to catch the bar with their hands. But if she didn't reach it, your sandwich grip would make it possible to slow the descent and keep her from falling on her head. The other frequent occurrence is a Jaeger that is a little too close to the bar, with the risk that the chin hits the bar. As before, you need to anticipate this possibility and keep the gymnast safe. Once again, taller coaches have an advantage. You will need to put your hand as early as possible on the gymnast's chest, while jumping if you need to, in order to pull her away from the bar. Once again, the sandwich grip is much more effective. And now for the typical spotting for hard landings, which you'll find in practice and during competition. In this case, our role is to act only if the gymnast doesn't catch the bar. At that stage, the success rate is generally higher, and we need to make a choice when our gymnast is in the air, to catch her or to not intervene in order to avoid losing points during the competition. Also in the case of expert gymnasts, Often when they are a little too far away, they still manage to catch the bar by stretching out in a practically superhuman way. That's why this time you will stand more perpendicular to the gymnast's shoulders than even with the center of gravity at the instant of release. That way you can better see at the end of the release whether or not the gymnast's arms are far from the bar. If our gymnast can't catch the bar, the techniques for guiding the landings are the same as what we saw earlier. Because you don't touch the shoulders or stomach at the beginning of the move, you use visual cues to anticipate your future actions. I make this choice when the gymnast is at the highest point of the trajectory. I think this is a personal choice, and experience and your work habits with the gymnast will guide you. But I think you should constantly keep the mantra, better safe than sorry, in mind when you're standing under the bar. Here's a view from the spotting position, in order to get a little closer to the perspective from under the bar. This concludes Chapter 4 of our training on the Jaeger. You can find the six other videos in this study at www.gymneo.tv with an introduction to the training, 
the technical analysis of the movement, prerequisites, learning exercises, specific physical preparation, and a live performance on the study of errors and their corrections. These performances are currently available only in French, but we look forward to announcing the official online release of Gymneo TV in English very soon. Happy training to all!